Well, uh, we have to interrupt some of our programs in order for us to bring you the a special update on the protest or the demonstration that Nigerians are having on the streets uh, of Nigeria. Everywhere in Nigeria, people are gathering, even in the states that they're saying there are no protests. Uh, one or two people are, you know, coming out to say uh, what they're feeling uh, in this uh, present economy. And so we, it is safe to say that the entire Nigeria is protesting right now. Uh, some are saying end bad governance, others are saying we support the government. Whatever divide you are, uh, there's a protest somehow in Nigeria. So we have two gentlemen joining us uh, that in the person of uh, Mr. Abiodun Shoumi. Good morning and welcome, or good afternoon rather, and welcome to. Uh, the program. Mr. Shoumi, welcome to the program. I can't seem to hear uh, Mr. Shoumi there. We also have Ms. Uh, Dr. Martin Morgan uh, rejoining us. Okay. Dr. Morgan has rejoined us. He was here in the morning when we we're doing the breakfast show, but right now he has come back again so that we can hear these updates from everywhere in Nigeria. Uh, Dr. Morgan, welcome back to the program. Yeah, welcome back to back. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, Mr. Shomi, let's, let's, let's begin with you to just have an intro into what is happening here. We will play the clips that we have so far um, after this intro, and then we will be uh, looking out or listening out for uh, the reports from the correspondents everywhere in Nigeria. So, uh, Mr. Shomi, day two of the protest, what is your take? It seems his audio is delayed or there's a network issue. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Show me. No, I think the network issue is coming from your end. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Mm. No, the objective of the protest in terms of you know amplifying the experiences of the people, you know, it's has been made very clear. The federal government had, you know, the message loud and clear that look, um, they, they need to do more in terms of alleviating the plight of the people in the light of the economic plight of the country. And uh, they also show an appreciation of the efforts uh, made so far by. Uh, look, if this has not translated into. Yes, I can hear you now. We lost, your, we lost your audio for some time, but I can hear you now. And that is what we... Yeah, we also made a statement very clear that protest is right. Both the president and everyone seem to agree that protest is essentially a fundamental right of the people in a constitutional democracy. We have also still an improvement in the behavior of um, the Nigerian police force um, compared to what happened in the past in terms of um, um, firing in the air to these past um, uh, demonstrators. Of course, we had some problems in some parts of the country, particularly. society leaders, which um, hopefully they will be able to resolve this issue. The most important thing is uh, the, the more has to be done 
it's not just about lifting importation of the uh, or ban on importation of food or removing the customs study that will solve the problem. We need to be able to ramp up production of food at home with a view to bring down the price. Well, So they need to do the aspect in relation to uh, the cost of governance and also the enrollments, including allowances for uh, political leaders. So fundamentally speaking, there are only two ways to solve this problem, which is we have to run for food production. And to do that will not happen overnight. The second issue is also you know, to ensure that we tackle corruption and also reduce the enrollments you know, of people in political power, so that as we are experiencing it, they should also experience the, the pain and stuff. We sincerely apologize for the uh, uh, quality. Yeah, the audio quality is having hiccups uh, every now and again, so I, I don't know how that is going to be adjusted. We do hope that uh, it, there will be an improvement on that. While we try to rectify that, because Mr. Biodun said uh, there's absolutely no problem on his side, we're also looking at our own side to see if there is a problem from here, but uh, we don't know. Uh, even part of the, the denials of the federal government has been that uh, they did not talk to the network providers because network has been really, really bad in these uh, last few days, uh, the day before yesterday to yesterday and then today. And people are saying that it's because of the protests that the federal government has had a hand in it. And the uh, minister in charge is saying that, no, the federal government did not say anything to that regard. Uh, but let me come to you, Dr. Morgan. Uh, do you think that the, the federal government uh, and indeed government has learned any lesson especially in the way uh, the utterances have been going on uh, right now that people are trying to douse the tension we find uh, the fct minister if even still now saying that they have discovered a senator that is sponsoring uh, the 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 protest because the senator sent food and security people to go and give to the protesters and then protect the protesters and that he will be invited in due course and all that it seems as if there still is a denial whether the fault is from the government and there is no humility to say please we are sorry for whatever you're going through and this is the solution that we are bringing to the table uh, uh, well i think uh, we, we just have to really to understand that yes uh, prior to this uh, situation, we just the level of uh, reactiveness instead of being proactive in the terms of communication and see how we can uh, solve this situation could have been mitigated before getting to this point. Then talking about the protest generally, there have been a lot of high level of consciousness prior to this because we saw how the government machineries were able to try to meet the various uh, uh, stakeholders, including the traditional rulers and the constituency people to say that fine, you we don't need this type of protest and these are some of these policies being put in, you know, on ground to, to really mitigate the situation we are protesting. So that alone gives you that credence to the fact that yes, there have been a listening here that came in, but uh, it was a, a later G of uh, uh, denial in terms of proactiveness. Then you look about the issue of the uh, FCT minister. He was saying that yes, something, uh, somebody they're giving their food. I think compared to what is on the emotional intelligence that provoking their talk, and we should, we should be able to provoke more sentiments and sensibilities as needed because some of these statements are not very good in terms of talking to the crowd when there is a lot of conflict. Whether we like it or not, there is a conflict between the people, them upstairs and down, because the people are generally linked in terms of hunger, irrespective of tribe, irrespective of ethnicity, irrespective of religion, because people are now linked to hunger and they are telling that you are hungry, you want to demonstrate the fact that you are hungry. 
And so this is how it is. So now, looking at the whole situation, the proactiveness in terms of communicating <laughs> have not been effectively deployed, so which is does not go at this moment in time. Because you are in a democratic system, whereby the people have the right to tell you that this is what we need, this is what we need. We are not happy with this situation. So this one will have been the point of taking it as a feedback and see how you can now pacify with the people. Fine, we are, we are your representative. This is what we are going on to do. Okay, we also are encountering some some issues there, but I, I'm sure that they will get better. But at this point, let's just take some clips of what is happening across the nation. We have a clip from Kaduna. We also have the address of the IGP uh, to the people of Nigeria telling us what has transpired. In fact, including the fact that one of the policemen had been uh, killed in the cause of this protest. We also have some clips from Lagos State, what happened this morning. And then we'll be expecting our correspondents to start uh, talking to us from wherever they are. We still have uh, Mr. Abiodun Shomi on the show and also Dr. Martins ha has returned to the show. We'll take these clips now and then when we return, we'll continue to talk to our guests. The assessment through my observation plateau is that the state is relatively peaceful and people are going about their normal business with that because number one the security we are in place on the ground is to ensure that we protect the interests of everybody even if there is a protest even if there is any protest whether peaceful or not we are here to provide security for all and sundry but we thank god there is no violence protest we the student leaders of Ekiti State, thereby disassociate ourselves from the planned faceless peaceful protest that may lead to riots and destructions. While we acknowledge the current hardship faced by our students and the general public, we urge everyone to remain calm and peaceful. We believe in engagement the government diplomatically to address our concern rather than resorting to the protest that may escalate into violence. By the time you are planning a protest to last for 10 days, there is no doubt that normal, ordinary livelihood in the way we know it will be disrupted. Now, if we are, in fail, if we are doing so in support of people that are hungry, there is no way you will tell them to go hungry for 10 days and not pursue their daily duties. There is no way you can disrupt civil activities and civil society for 10 days without it degenerating into unanticipated and undesirable outcomes. And this is why we are solidly with everybody in Nigeria, particularly in Yoruba land, who have spoken out against the planned protests. We don't want it, we don't need it. The assessment to my observation part. Regrettably, events in some major cities today show that what was being instigated was mass uprising and looting, not protest. Those who were in the forefront of promoting the idea of the protest were not around to lead it. Hoodlums have been let loose on innocent Nigerians and their hard-earned businesses and property looted and destroyed. The motive of the rioters was basically two. Loot and destroy both private and government property. The destruction so far has been mind-boggling. There have been destruction in Kano, Borno, Yobe, Kaduna, Gombe, Bauchi, FCT, Abuja, Naida, and Jigawa. Police stations have been destroyed. There have been attempts to take over government houses, looting of government infrastructures. Several warehouses and shops so far have been looted and in several instances completely destroyed. 
In places like FCT, Kaduna, Kano, and Gombe, among others, we recorded incidents of unprovoked attacks on our security personnel, where one policeman has been reported murdered and others seriously injured. In the light of the current situation, the Nigerian police force has placed all units on red alert. Our officers are fully mobilized and prepared to respond swiftly and decisively to any further threats to public safety and order. We remain committed and resolute to protecting lives and property and ensuring that law, law and order are maintained across the nation. Groups who are hiding under the guise of exercise of a right provided in the Constitution to destabilize the country should also remember that the same Constitution imposed on them the duty to obey the laws of the land and respect the rights of other citizens. The police is equipped to respond appropriately to the unfolding situations and will get assistance from other security agencies, including the military, if the need arises. I remain your commissioner of police, your friend, your colleague in progress, so that this nation will be better. Uh, I want to appeal to you that we should continue in this tempo. By the time we do this, this is going to be a standard that other states will copy on what is called a peaceful protest. All the police will you see around are to protect you. And we are ready, even if you have any letter, I can assure you, myself and government officials will come for it. And I want to assure you that in the next few hours, your letter will get to the appropriate quarters. The Nigeria Police Force is one of the most sensitive organizations you can find in Nigeria. I want also to bring attention to a number of states, Lagos and the SCT, and probably one of other states who have gotten court orders restricting the movement of protesters to, de to designated areas. Have the protesters abide by this? The reason sign is no. Now again, if you look at what you have in Nasaba, which we are trying to ensure that it does not escalate beyond this. In an attempt to go about their lawful protest and peaceful, so called peaceful protest, citizens, innocent citizens, are being assaulted and being forced to join the protest. Protest is supposed to be a voluntary thing. When it becomes that people are being coerced, are being threatened to join, then it is no longer peaceful. And the Nigerian police force has a duty and responsibility to ensure that this protest remains peaceful. For as long as it is peaceful, we will protect the protesters. But at the point where you decide to become violent, to loot, to force other citizens who are not members of your organization are willing to join, I think it is important that the Nigerian police and other law enforcement agents ensure that there is no breakdown of law and order. Okay, uh, we've seen some clips, we've seen uh, the comments from the police uh, men or the security agencies and all that. And uh, we have our correspondents uh, standing by. We still also have uh, uh, joining us or having joined us earlier on on the show, uh, two gentlemen who will be reviewing uh, day two of the protest uh, this morning or this afternoon. Uh, Habila Dorafai is a Plus TV correspondent in Kaduna State. He spoke to us yesterday. He spoke to us yesterday and said that there was relative peace in Kaduna and there was no protest. Let's see whether it's the same situation this afternoon. Habila Dorafai, good afternoon and welcome to the program. Habila, welcome to the program. There still may be a, a network problem uh, as well, and in spite of the fact that the minister has said the federal government has no hand in it, I think they should address this issue now before people begin to suspect that it may not be true what the minister is saying, because the timing is really terrible that is at this moment that uh, the network will be so bad everywhere. 
Uh, Bila is supposed to talk to us from Kaduna State and we also are having issues even connecting with our guests on Zoom here in the studio and I don't know where that is. We've looked for the problem from our end and we can't seem to find it and our guests are really sure that it's not from their end. So the network providers will have to explain to us at some point. But um, let's hope that the, the audio quality will be better. Well, let's come back to you, Mr. Shoumi. Um, day two, we're talking about... Uh, I, I just asked Dr. Morgan before we went to take those clips whether he thinks that the federal government or the government generally has learned any lesson because of the utterances that are still coming from people who should douse the tension bit by the way they talk and all that. We took a case in point, uh, the FCT minister who is saying we have identified people sponsoring the the protest instead of thinking about what the the meat of the process uh, protest is uh, uh, in the first place to see how they can advise the president until this moment if they're still trying to talk like this it shows or it feels as if they are still living in denial and nothing good may come out of this yes um, <coughs> we all agree that government seems to have um, had the voice the voices of the protesters. Um, prior to now they've taken initiative like uh, Dr. Morgan identified, you know, in terms of trying to calm the situation, getting the traditional leaders involved and also that some eminent um, personalities government reached out to with a view to um, deal with the situation. Then you also have the issue of um, the the uh, Kudos supply, which was agitating the minds of many people on the social media at that point in time. The president came out with his resolution to it in a way that people seem to be satisfied. But the bottom line at the end of the day is um, the people's ability to afford uh, food on their table. Yes, the minimum wage has, has been agreed, but when you actually, in reality, look at it, how many people are affected? You are looking at about 21% of the population. What about the vast majority of the people who are not? You know, affected by the minimum, by virtue of um, being formally employed, a lot in the informal sector and quite a lot, you know, not employed, gainfully employed in any form. So there are a lot of issues um, agitating the minds of uh, many people. Um, yes, we all know that you know, would be not cause a problem, but um, at the same time, he has for the job and he's gotten the job, he's, he's prepared to resolve it. You know, the factors are related to the present situation. Uh, which he had to provide a solution, uh, which again has uh, a multiplier effect on the different spheres of uh, people's life, which Mr. led Shoumi, to this protest. Now, you in relation to just the a moment, FCT, just a moment, I'm just trying to understand when the present president came on board he said that he doesn't want pt that's not what he wants he applied for the job he got the job he's equal to the task. So for a lot of Nigerians is is just a, a a flimsy excuse to say that the problems didn't come from him because he knew the problems before he came into office and his his own party was in government for eight years before this so the rot was also uh, committed by his by his party and all that but right now the question is is it very belittling is it belittling rather is it beneath the feet of uh, uh, the president to address the Nigerian populace because he has been talking to traditional rulers, he has been talking to governors that are under him, he has been talking to ministers, he didn't talk to the Nigerian people, he didn't even call the people who identified as, a, as those um, organizing the protest. So is it such a thing that is too small for the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria at this kind of time to come out and talk to the people of Nigeria? Because, I mean, a lot of people believe that if he had said something, uh, it wouldn't have gotten to this point at all. But he's talking to us through proxies. Do you think that's the right approach to take? Honestly speaking... I can't hear your audio anymore. Uh, maybe uh, it's back to the network problem and all that. Uh, but let me, yes, I can hear you now. Yes, I can hear you. 
Oh, yes. Right from the world, those who organize protests and they say across them from the world, which is by virtue of the fact that when they came up with bad governance, oh yeah, we all applaud it and said, look, what does that mean? We need to understand that. Yes, it means basically people are not able to feed, and it also means that there are people who are being paid not watering amounts of money uh, in the legislature or also in government. So therefore, something needs to be done in order to make sure that we are not just the one tightening the belts, but others are not losing, losing their belt. But when they came out with the second agenda, oh, Tinubu Moscow, that's purely political. There are processes to remove the president in the constitutional democracy. They love the president there. When they came up with the idea of free man, they can, you know, again, they lost the president. So immediately, of course, there will be security reports minding the president on the situation in the country. So all those has not helped in any form um, to get the president uh, to personally be persuaded that this is not an issue that is not being sponsored by some people. And that is within that context, you see the weakest of this world. You know, actually uh, amplifying that, that um, the, it depends on the security report the president is receiving. One thing which seems very clear uh, to many people is that people are aware that there were problems and that the president did not have the full information, you know, because he was not occupying any political office. So he couldn't have had the full information about the state of the economy uh, when uh, the last administration was there. So, yes, they belong to the same party, but it's not all members of that party that are functionaries of uh, the last administration. So, but the fact of the matter is, we were all warned all along, not only by Lamido Samsi, that look, the way we are going, the economy will crash. Not only uh, in 2018, if Okay, uh, we lost the audio there again. Um, me, me hold that thought in case you're still talking or you can hear me. We can't hear you anymore. But at this time, let me let me just go to uh, Kaduna to join Habila Dorafai. He's on standby now to talk to us. Habila, good afternoon. Okay. Yeah, let, let me just talk to the correspondent now. Habila, good afternoon to you. Unmute yourself, uh, Habila. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Give us the situation report now. Before, uh, before now, you told us that in Kaduna it was peaceful and there was no protest at all. Uh, what is the situation now? Is it still that peaceful? Is it that there is no protest anymore or people have come out to protest? We are at the peace right now. There is no any protest going on in the United States after the military fire uh, that was taking place today. And we um, can see that most of the streets, most of the streets are recycled. So the are some businesses are being done. The military are just waiting to get to the area of the moon. And at the peace, now banks are used. Uh, even the market, only few people that are able to come out for uh, um, the market. So as we see now, we, there are security forces all over the street in the Kabinian Metropoli, trying to ensure that law and order are being maintained and that the peace can prevent any form of protest or any violence that we cause may harm in the in the state. reason uh, that you can attribute this peace, relative peace in Kaduna to, uh, is it something the government did? Is it what the people did? Or how is it possible that while almost every uh, state of Nigeria is protesting, Abuja is not protesting? Oh, sorry, Kaduna is not protesting. Yeah, I think uh, we can attribute it to the collective effort. With the government, the security agency, the religious leaders, and the, the, uh, the residents at that we need to be ensuring that the peace is enjoyed in the state. As you rightly know, the plan is very sensitive when we have something like this. The fear is not the only issue we should have done something different. So I think 
What have just happened is that some demons and some people try to hijack the computers. So and we believe that going further, the measures put in place by the governor, by the security agencies. We, we can attribute that but it must be very little very all right thank you very much habila for that uh, update that you've given us from kaduna thank you very much Okay, that was Habila uh, Dorafai uh, talking to us from Kaduna. He told us in the morning, uh, even yesterday, that there was no protest in Kaduna State. Right now, he has uh, re-echoed that. He has repeated that and said that there's no uh, protest in Kaduna State. But a very important thing that he said was that, uh, first of all, we apologize for the poor audio quality. Um, he said that he attributes the peace that is happening in Kaduna right now uh, to the political will, the doggedness, the, the attitude of the governor in collaboration with the security agencies in the state. So which means the governor had a very big role to play, maybe in talking to his people, maybe doing a lot of other things to douse the tension, which means that governors could actually have brought uh, this tension down a little bit more than it is right now. But every state has its own peculiar problem, so we cannot say what happens in Kaduna can happen in Imo state or any other state anyway. But um, we say that whoever is in, in charge of people should know how to talk to the people and should know how to you know, enter the ranks of the people and make them see reason with you. That's a very good one from Kaduna State. So we strike Kaduna State out as a state that is not having problems during this protest. We also have Jacob Poakim, a civil society activist in Plateau State. He's at the protest ground right now. We hope that he can join us here. Uh, Jacob, can you hear me? Good afternoon. Unmute yourself, Jacob. We can't hear you. Yeah, I can hear you loud and clear. Good afternoon. Beautiful. Good afternoon. Uh, so what's the situation there in uh, Plateau State? Okay, uh, Plateau State, as, uh, as it, it was yesterday, very calm. As you can see behind me, uh, the Muslims uh, that are participating in this protest are uh, observing their human prayer. So instead of going to the mosque, um, they decided to do it here. And as yesterday, there was a very strong backup by the Christians to ensure that every other thing has been put on, on hold, pending when their prayers uh, will be done, uh, so that we can continue uh, with uh, the, the protest. So the place is calm. Um, though in the morning, there were distinguishes um, about the blockage of roads, but that has been sorted out uh, because there were agitations by young people that um, while they are out here fighting for Nigeria, um, other people are opening their shops, which is quite disrespectful to them uh, because they too they have other things to do. But uh, with the efforts of a few of the civil society practitioners, um, so also some other uh, people that have been able to manage this, there's a very prominent religious leader here, uh, Prophet, uh, Prophet Israel Buba. Um, his role too is really playing a very big, uh, he's playing a very big role. And we must give it to the security. They have been quite professional here, quite engaging and quite tolerant. Uh, because we have a couple of young people here that um, feel um, they just need to be hurt. And we have been trying to see, okay, how do we calm them? How do we make them also feel that their voices matter? Uh, at this level that they feel aggrieved, they feel there are grievances, and they feel that they are hungry. As, uh, as, uh, as an activist, do you think that the 10 days allotted, or the 10 days that we are hoping to have this uh, protest is, is, is not too long? Okay, um, in, in all honesty, the 10 days is, not, is, is long. If the government decides to respond, before the 10 days, we need to hear Mr. President speak to us. Because when you look at now the trajectories from yesterday, yesterday was day one, today, day two, 
we have more people. And there's a tendency that the three is going to be more. So the more the president delays speaking to Nigerians, the more the people become agitated. And like today, I told you, the crowd was not too difficult to manage. But today, there were people who didn't come yesterday. But today, they came, not knowing what we had already set out yesterday, that there will be no burning, there will be no destruction. Today, they are coming, which means that there's a tendency that the longer the protest lasts, the higher even states like Plato that have already been regarded to be peaceful are more likely to be, uh, to be, to be violent because they feel disrespected. They feel that Mr. President, despite what is happening in other states, Mr. President is quiet. So in, in, your, in your opinion, the president will have to talk to us. What, what if the president doesn't talk to us and he, his minister talks to us? Will that not be good enough? If the minister is an appointee of Mr. President. And even myself that I'm speaking to you and any other Nigeria standing here can also be a minister. So a minister does not carry the weight of the president. He is the commander-in-chief. And that is why they give him the title of a, it's beyond, it's not a chief fancy title. It is a position, it is a title that it comes with power and authority. And if you say, Mr. the minister will speak to us, then the Nigerians are also going to feel more disrespected. In this gathering, we also have a former minister that have come to join this protest. So are the current minister different from the former minister that is part of this protest? So... For us on this protest ground, any minister is just, just anybody that can be sacked for whatever he has said. The man that we are giving him the mandate for four years, we need to, to speak to us. We need to hear him. In the interest of national security, he is not just about us. We are talking about young people here who are coming out on the street. Some don't even know what the demands are. All they care about is that they are hungry and they need somebody who can give them hope. They need somebody who can make a proclamation. Since Mr. President made a proclamation, which people ascribe to the fact that it brought poverty to people, they want that same proclamation to change the type. Since proclamation was made on May 29, that same proclamation it didn't go to National Assembly. It also means that it doesn't need to go to National Assembly to change the suffering of Nigerians. Mm. Okay, thank you so much uh, for this update. Uh, if, if there is uh, a need, we might need to come back to you uh, to give us more update. But we hope that you will stay safe and it will continue to be sure. peaceful where you are. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Okay, now we will we'll now join Emmanuel Ehejene, a Plus TV correspondent in FCT Abuja, to hear what is happening at the center. Uh, of Nigeria as it is, as the heart of Nigeria. Emmanuel, good afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon. Okay, so give us an update. Uh, in Abuja, we know that a few days ago, the minister was talking to the youth and he was asking them whether they were going to join in the protest. And there was a resounding no. Uh, but we hear that the protest is also holding in Abuja. Is this true? And if it is holding in Abuja, where is it today? Because we've heard that they have left the uh, MKO Abiola Stadium that they were supposed to protest in. What is happening? Uh, well, um, yes. Yeah. Hello? So, yeah. um, what I, yesterday, uh, due to the court judgment, you know, that restricted the protest from the streets to, to the national area, most of the protesters, you know, at the early hours of yesterday, headed streets to the National Dollar Stadium. But unfortunately, um, all that persons are uh, suspected to be, um, sponsored protesters also arrived at that same venue. So it was like uh, these other people waiting to see what, what the other persons will do. You know, so there was that standoff for a period of time before the main protest started. At the end of the day, though what started gradually now started spilling over to different parts of the SCT, like the Karo area, Guagualada, Kubwa, Lube, and every other part of Abuja, they blocked the street and they started protesting from then up. So uh, that was how it, it, it started yesterday in Abuja. 
and it was really volatile in some areas, especially at Guagwala Agnes, where police started throwing tear gas, you know, and, and firing. But unfortunately, no life was lost yesterday. They, mostly you've talked about yesterday. What about today? Uh, for today, it, it is, it, today it is really, it's really peaceful. Um, some, uh, except in areas like Bega, where as soon as the policemen started noticing persons gathering around the place, they now started dispatching them immediately. But it was not, it was not so as um, the Ministry of Finance. So where protesters, presently as we speak, protesters are all gathered there at the finance, chanting hungry do, hunger do, hunger do, and all those things. So that is, but for, for today, um, protests in Abuja is relatively calm compared to that of yesterday. The Bacha area or something like that is very volatile and we don't know how, how volatile that is or maybe we are, we are misinformed. The truth is, the truth about Bega is that, you know, just like yesterday, it started peacefully. But at, let's continue to watch what will happen. Because I know that with more persons coming, the put, I know the protests will... will, 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 will we go tougher, you know. But for now, these people are just taking their time, hanging around. What do you think? What do you think can be done so that it doesn't snowball into what you are uh, envisaging uh, for the protest? You said it might get. You know, worse, everybody. What, what can be done? Yeah. The, uh, the protesters believe that they are being taken for granted. Everybody is expecting Mr. President to make a broadcast at this point maybe bring down the price of goods and services, or totally bring back the subsidy on crude oil. And I'm sure that with those kind of speeches, I'm, I'm sure all, most Nigerians will, 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 will leave the street and, and, and go back home. But since he has not spoken, I don't think um, the, 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 the protest will stop anytime soon. All right. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for giving us an update there. We might call you back if we need to. But uh, if there's additional information, please do let us know so that we can bring you back on to tell us what is happening in Abuja. We're concerned about what is happening there. That is the seat of power as it is. And anything goes wrong in Abuja or Lagos, uh, then Nigeria may uh, find it difficult to recover. Thank you so much, Emmanuel. Okay, let me go back to our guest uh, who joined us earlier on. Uh, Dr. Morgan, you've heard what the people are saying. Correspondents everywhere are talking about the fact that uh, uh, in some places that we thought that maybe it was even more volatile, it's a bit peaceful, but the fear is that if the, con the president continues to be silent, there might be uh, something that we do not even anticipate at this moment. What do you think about what you've heard from our correspondents so far? For me, I did. okay, good. Oh, okay, it's for me. Yes, well, I think, um, I think your correspondence spoke the minds of many people. Uh, Bahalia tried to explain what could, um, um, uh, what could be going through the minds of those in political power, which is. Initially, when they got the team wrong and was focusing on political issues and allowed the political class, you know, to now start uh, fanning members of suspicion about the motive and um, trying to profile other people as being responsible for the protest, when we really know that in reality, things are very difficult in the country and very challenging. Now, the fact of the matter is... The correspondents are correct. Many people want to hear from the president. The question is this, to hear what? I mean, I noticed one correspondent highlighted the fact that people wanted, uh, since the president made the proclamation on, uh, on, on June 1st, you know, that um, with, with F, if F on June 1st, that subsidy is gone. And therefore, he could also go ahead and make the same uh, proclamation, you know, to... Uh, bring uh, down prices.
crisis. Of course, that is not realistic. That is quite unreasonable. The fact of the matter is um, we need to understand that budget is done for a year. When Buhari was doing a budget for six months for subsidies, why didn't we protest and get provisions made you know, for a year? The fact of the matter is uh, there was no money. At that point when Tidumbu was taken over, already you know, the federal government were owing for our starters. Things were, they were barely paying salaries. No new money for investment. We've been borrowing money. And we need to understand the fact that when Jonathan left office, Buhari took over, the debt was $10.2 trillion. Buhari took it to $97.5 trillion. And uh, not only that, the ways and means, which usually will, the federal government is allowed to borrow only $1 trillion naira, they went as far as he borrowed up to $27 trillion. They have forward sold the, you know, the oil. No matter who comes into power when Tinubu got there, they would have to do something very dramatic to be able to continue to fund you know, activities of government. But the fact of the matter is um, some people have argued, which uh, they may be correct, that look, why don't you, even if you have to do it, uh, it could still be faced in you know, over a period of three months. Of course, Whoever comes into power will think about resistance. We are giving enough room to build the resistance, and then we'll continue to borrow in order to fall. Of course, we are still borrowing. The level of borrowing has reduced since we have fought so all oil. We can't get out of that until June next year. What all of us are failing to address, including those who are making the demand, asking Mr. President to make a, um, a, an address to the nation, you know, for them to come down. Now, is that's not what they're looking for. They're looking for a change in the situation, either a reversal back to 12 subsidy regime, based on the fact that, after all, more money has been released to the economy, um, which, uh, on their own part, they have not seen the impact, and that they rather prefer that subsidy regime. The fact of the matter is we've gone past beyond that. And what they're looking for is not what I don't think Mr. President can easily announced. Once he does that, we we'll go back to borrowing. And when we keep borrowing, the country will bust. What we need is to restructure this country. That is what I think the, the whole clamor should be about, the whole agitation. It's not enough to say, oh, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Okay, now we force the federal government, you know, to uh, declare that um, there will be no custom duty. Anybody who has money can bring in food. How is that going to help the agricultural sector? For instance, the, the, the Poultry Association of Nigeria disclosed about a month ago that 30% 30, 30 of poultry have closed down. Now, we are looking at about 40 to 50% closing down. And why? Because of the cost of feed. 60% of that is grains. So why can't we, why are we importing all these things? Why can't we look at how to convert our youth coppers, you know, from going to uh, the sources of cheap labor for private businesses, you know, to, to go and work in the firm? You know, why aren't we thinking outside the normal box? Because at the end of the day, every food you import, you are creating jobs, farming jobs in other countries to the, at the expense of our own country. And what then happens will collapse the whole agricultural sector. Is that what you want? I'm sure that's not what you want. What we want is to ramp up food production in order to reduce the cost of food. Where you have a, a surplus, the prices will come down. The current problem is a function of uh, inadequate supply of food products in the country. We know the issue of insecurity. We should be demanding that the federal government should do more on insecurity for farmers to be able to go to farms. We need to look at the issue of land. What do we need to do? The state governments are the owners of the land. Why can't we look at, look, lands that are lying fallow? Uh, the government can lease them, compulsory leasing, you know, for agricultural purposes and get our people to work. Why aren't we thinking and going back to the days of the Western region, you know, in the regional days, in the 60s, when in every local government, tractors, plowers, they are there to help farmers to cultivate the land. We have still factory in Bauchi to produce the caterpillars. It's all been run down. Why aren't we going back to Austria to say, look, we want to restart this, create jobs to that, create, you know, provide, you know, uh, uh, caterpillars, provide tractors, provide plowers, planters, harvesters for farmers in order to ramp up food production. After all, how, does it, how long does it take? And it is it for grains, only takes two months. All take grains, take grains, which we're about a billion dollars a year to import. Take it out of uh, the equation. 
take forest out of the equation, which we are now beginning to do that uh, with um, the modular refineries and then go to the refinery coming on stream, then our financial situation will be better with forex. And then our Naira will appreciate better than what we have currently. So what we are not demanding is the structuring of the country. That is the solution to our problem. We are only talking about the symptoms, not the causes of the problem which we face to. Okay. Uh, Dr. Morgan, do you also feel that way? Because some Nigerians will think that uh, the fact that the previous, previous government did not budget for this uh, fuel subsidy is not an excuse. Because right now in Nigeria, we are operating about, about four budgets. We have the 2023 budget, which we are still uh, working on. We have a supplementary budget for the 2023. We have the 2024 budget and also a supplementary budget for the 2024. Why couldn't there have been a supplementary budget uh, that will cover oil? And also the fact that a lot of people who are at the corridors of power are saying that the subsidy has not fully gone. We are still spending almost like a trillion naira on subsidy every month in Nigeria or something close to that. And so how do we convince the people of Nigeria that, you know, it's because the previous government budgeted uh, without the subsidy. That's why it was removed. It's not a problem of this uh, administration. And how can we convince the Nigerian populace that it is to the benefit of Nigerians if that same subsidy that they're saying that will save money for us is making us more hungry? Yes, I think uh, what uh, uh, Mr. Berry said, I think uh, most of the things he outlined, there are very many reasons. Anyway, I have my own understanding because we need to understand the fact that uh, for the past five or ten years, we have been having a budget deficit as a result of the implementations and uh, what are the projections. Because so certain variables are not giving us what we expect. But now let's come back to the issue of uh, what we are having. Most of the crisis we are having here is as a result of the logistic end of whatever uh, whatever we have when the farm produce has come in. Agree. There's a high rate of insecurity that is putting us a problem as, as, a, as a result of this our food shortage. And we know that very soon, very soon in this country, I'm, I'm in almost 18 countries, 18 states after the 36 will go to a complete situation of food starvation. Like you say, you provide a solution about this agriculture and the rest and the restructuring. My own problem here is that restructuring may not give us the immediate solutions we need help because we are putting all at the doorstep of the president but at, at the same time we need also the president to just address there's an issue of an emotional intelligence at this point whereby we need to raise a fine this like the other some of your correspondents have said in Kaduna nobody is out but there's a docile protest because nobody is outside to come to do this business in, in other place in plateau they are all there so what, what we are telling you here is that like what we are doing analyze, the only thing we should be able to do is that we should also get the governors and the local government engaged. If you are talking about the long term agriculture, we used to Western region, those that gave us cocoa house and the other thing we have been living in the east, they had the palm oil and the other. instead of us looking at the situation whereby we say no, this is a, what the people need at this moment now is for the president to address the nation. Yes, my people, you elected me here. I understand the whole thing. These are the difficulties. These are the, the policy, the changes I've made up for this moment. They let us work towards a particular time. They just want the face. There's a lot of emotion. <laughs> this place. Whereby, if you address the process and the less of his aid, then if you look at also at the solutions. We are now looking for the short term. How do we stop? The state governors have to be involved in this communication. The state governors have to be involved because they are closer to the people. The people they need to go back to their constituents and say, come on the same page. I agree. We have now currently almost uh, our MDAs. We have more, uh, a lot of MDAs that are not very much. <laughs> And this is giving us a lot more than us. The act of governance in this sense of pay from the subsidy, let us put it in that farming thing we are talking about in the Instead of every person coming to Abuja cap in hand, 
is not going to help. So we, we use we have to have a drift federation, but not that total restructuring going back to the East, East days or Western region. And no, it will not work at this moment in time. Strictly my view, but I think uh, let it just come. The magic will apply. But at this moment, this is what we have done. All these reforms we have, we are going to do that. And in terms of fuel subsidy, uh, because it's the logistic and I bring in the cost. But the parameter, as I then as today, the parameters are quite different. Two things. If we cannot fix up our rate of fire because we need to understand. They need to dance out this situation. This situation is not helping us and it will take the country as the leader, as a father. Your children are crying. They are hungry. Yes, I understand very well. Come and talk to them. And that may be the magic. That may be the magic at this situation because we don't want it to go. A 10 day, I don't see a 10 day. I agree. Some of the demands these guys are doing, they are very political. Some of them are political. Talking about Mr. Nnamdi Karo to be released, it has nothing to do with our hunger. It's not part of it. So, it's a different board game. So, let us be realistic. The first subsidy, like you said, we know some area that they said there was no first subsidy, a major contest, and having the agenda to remove the first subsidy. But the model of that removal is different. So this is where it has affected us very well. But then we can now take back and cushion. Then at the same time, the level of the corruption that is affecting us, there are some people who were charged for this process, who were involved. The consortium, what happened to them? Let us look at the consortium. This is what I've done. I have talked to the consortium. There's a sort of reimbursement we will now put into the system. These are some of the narr narr narration people want to hear, but not talking to by proxy, but keeping which totally. It's really putting the people to feel that yeah, they don't have regard for them. <laughs> Left to lead us are not having regard like the eating. So those type of communication is not helping very well. I will not expect any chaotic situation to arise because you cannot even ask a, girl, a city government to move. It's an anarchica because you know, it's these are different things. We are talking about about hunger and poverty. This is where the situation, I am of land in this country. Every state something to give. But tackling that insecurity, like we say, because a major problem that we need to look at, how people will return to farm. This is where we are. So we just need that little address to just touch to the people. It's more of an emotional issue than looking at it, so that we can douse our detention. But I don't foresee this guy going for 10 days too long. It become a silence, a, a crisis too long. We can't go for 10 days. Every day we are losing more than 400 to 500 uh, billion naira in the country. We cannot go that route. It's not going, we can't go that route. We can't go that route. What happened to those at the fourth year or the who are not under any employment? NIDAC, state, federal, local government, and organized private sector. What happens to them? They live on the street for a daily bill. But for now, they are not getting anything. So what do we do? So this is why we don't need that. That address may be the magic touch. So that we can now set a fine. This is the other policy. Then include whatever is doing and intercept into that. That's my take. Fellow Nigerians, uh, because when we return from this, we are, we, you individually are going to talk to Nigerians, uh, whatever is in your mind and what you expect of them at this moment, at this very trying moment uh, for, for our nation, this trying moment in the life of Nigeria as it is. We want to join uh, our uh, brother there in uh, River State, uh, Obina Nwoku, a journalist from River State. He is on ground to tell us what is happening in River State right now. Obinna, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Yes. Thank you. Okay, the first report we had from River State was that there was no protest uh, whatsoever. I don't know if that's still the situation at this moment. No, sir. It, uh, there, there is an ongoing protest at the moment, sir. Okay. So... How peaceful or otherwise is it? And what is really happening? Okay. The, uh, 
this morning, the protest, uh, the protesters or the demonstrators, they they converged at the front of the federal secretary this morning. Mm. So it, it was like a, a carnival scene. They hired DJ. Everybody was busy uh, dancing to the rhythm of the tunes of the DJ. And some moments later, they, they started the procession to towards government house. But they made a detour to NDDC uh, secretary. So that was where I trailed them. But I'm featuring them. They are uh, in front. But so far, there has been no but, violence, right? So far, there have been orderly, but you see some pockets of uh, rule, unruly elements, mm -hmm. like some people trying to extort motorists and uh, trying to slow down traffic. Although the commissioner of police came to the uh, protest ground at, uh, at the front of it. Um, secretary, the federal secretary, mm -hmm. and he addressed them and told them not to get disorderly. That he understand them, he understood their plight, and that they should not block the road. That they should allow a free flow traffic. Okay. That, uh, there should be orderly. Okay. And the reason I said that stories that got to us first were s suggesting that there was no protest was not because people did not gather, but the governor actually came out himself and addressed the people yesterday. So there was some yeah. kind of calm. Uh, do you have any information about what the governor said, what he promised, and why, uh, uh, and how the people took it? Okay. The, before the protest. Uh, two days before, uh, a day before the protest of yesterday, the governor came out to say he had crazy information that some people want to hijack the protest, and he urged residents not to partake in the protest. But should I say, unfortunately, the protest yesterday was massive, and the turnout was massive, actually. And they marched down to the entrance to uh, government house, and the governor, the governor came out and addressed the the crowd, and he told them not to. That he, he, he earlier he said fear that it might be hijacked, but he still urged them not to uh, allow it to be hijacked. That there should be other But there was a melodrama. That system yesterday. After finishing his uh, speech, he also added that he will find the protesters something uh, money, uh, something for pure water, mm. suggesting that he will find them something to quench their teeth. And the comment, the comment had to triggered the the sensitivities of the protesters, which. They reacted immediately and told him that they don't want his money, that the, what they are demanding for is just good governance. So that was just the melodrama of yesterday. But he told the gov he told the protester that he understood their plight and he's very sure and convinced that the policies taken by the federal government will be paralyzed okay. in no um, distant time. All right. Uh, Obina, thank you so much for giving us an update on what is happening in River State. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, we'll return to our guest in the studio, Dr. Morgan, for your final word to the people of Nigeria. And then we'll go to uh, Mr. Shoumi as well. Dr. Morgan, first. Well, my, my final word to the people of Nigeria is that Nigeria is a great country with good expectations. Then uh, there should also be that uh, exchange of ideas that people should remain a little bit calm. The, the expression of the protests have been made, and I am sure that those in power will also take those grievances and see how they can ameliorate the situation. But, uh, no more destruction and life lost, which is not very much expected. Mm, thank you very much. Mr. Show, may your own final word, if you're still with us. Uh, I am.
I'm sure Mr. President has heard um, everybody, the, all the protesters. I'm sure the federal government will be thinking about what Mr. President should say to the Nigerian people. Um, I'm sure it's not that the president may not just want to talk to the people, but he'll be thinking of what else, you know, to offer uh, with a view to uh, calm the situation. So all this may be going on behind the scene, um, but Nigerians need to understand that in as much as there is hunger in the land, we need also to uh, try and um, cut this demonstration. Um, I think 10 days is too long. Two, three days is probably okay. We should think about the plight of those who are not in any formal employment, who are the vast majority of our people who need to earn a daily living or who are living in the rural areas. So, uh, uh, yes, largely, we don't want violence. Uh, the youth should avoid violence and uh, the police force should continue to behave more professionally. And uh, we don't want anybody dead. I mean, already the number of dead currently is um, for me too much. So we need to look for a way to re-engage, uh, the government to re-engage with the people, while we, the people also, you know, need to be a bit calm and then see whether things can get resolved as soon as possible. Government on its own part needs to declare a national emergency in the food sector, in the agricultural sector, with a view to ramp up production of food within the shortest possible time. All right, thank you very much. Uh, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure having you on this other side of the program. We started in the morning, took a little break for other things to happen, and now we've come to review this. Uh, this matter of protest is a, an ongoing matter, and as the information comes in, uh, we are going to be uh, relaying to the people who are uh, watching us from wherever in the world. Thank you so much, Dr. Morgan, for coming, and Mr. Shoumi, thank you so much for being a part of our program. Thank you for having me. Mm. Thank you. All right. Last moment. Okay. Uh, we've been talking uh, to Ms. Uh, Dr. Morgan and Mr. Shoumi. Uh, we were looking at the protest as it's happening all around Nigeria. We took some correspondent reports uh, from Kaduna, uh, Plateau, uh, River State, and, Kad and all the other places that we could get this information from. Here in Lagos also we know what has been happening. People are at Ojota uh, protesting. But so far, relatively, it's been peaceful. It's not like the war that was being projected and uh, the scare that everybody was being given that uh, this protest is going to uh, snowball into something really uncontrollable. I mean, I'm happy uh, the way people are, are, are conducting themselves. Yesterday when the, the governor of River State said that he was going to give small something, I, I had to ask Obina that, uh, a small something to the people who were protesting, I said, okay, that, that was going to be the one that would break everybody um, apart because they will be looking at this money, who collected the money, how did they share the money and all that. And I'm so, so proud of the people because they said that was not what they wanted. They had a different agenda. So for the first time I've heard that Nigerian people rejected money, free money that was coming to them because they had a higher purpose. So there's hope yet for our country, Nigeria. But let me use this time as my own final word as well to say, please, Mr. President, in case you are not thinking it, addressing Nigerians would be very, very, very good for whatever is happening or for the life of our little democracy that we are managing, as we will say, in Nigeria. Even if there is nothing concrete, give us the assurance that you will look into these problems, you will review the policies, maybe not 100% as we are thinking you should review them, but you would review this. Let's just know that you're listening to us. It's not enough to send proxies to come and talk to Nigerians. Douse the tension as the father you are. You are the father that we elected to go there to Asurok. People might say, eh, we, I didn't elect you, but at the end of the day, you were the one sworn in, and you are the one with the mantle of leadership that should take care of the Nigerian citizens, no matter where they are, no matter their party, no matter their religion, no matter their ethnicity. So talk to the Nigerian people. Just assure us that you are thinking about it and you have felt the voices that are shouting right now very at the top of uh, their voices, the people that are shouting at the top of their voices that you say something. So just say something. You may not promise us heaven and earth, but say something. Let's know that you are even hearing it. You told us during the election that you don't go to the social media anymore because people go there, abuse you here and there, call you names and all that, so you don't go anymore. But 
Is that a reason that you're not talking to us, that maybe you're not even going to the social media to see for yourself what is happening? People are dying. So far, we've heard 17 people have died, and that is the official figure. We don't know whether more people have died uh, because of these protests. So it has to stop somewhere. Ten days is too much. Please address us now. If not today, please tomorrow. Just tell us, my people, I have heard your voice. And then, if you tell us that, you see what the streets will look like. Please, Mr. President, that is my own final word to you. And for everybody who has been a part of this program, we'd like to thank you. Stay safe wherever you are. Be peaceful, even if you're on the protest ground. Make sure that Nigeria does not explode because of your particular actions. And if you see something, say something, because we know that maybe 95% of the people are there for a particular purpose and they have the interest of Nigeria at heart. But the 5% that might want to foment trouble might make this protest become something else. So make sure that those 5% are held accountable. Don't wait for the police. Citizens can make arrests. So if you find somebody who is trying to vandalize uh, uh, government properties, and what we call government is not the people who are leading us. Government is all of us because we pay the tax that make them, um, that help them to build whatever they are building for us. So we are government as well. You see somebody vandalizing, stealing, and doing other things that are not in line with the reason why people are on the streets. Just report that person or arrest that person if you can and make sure that the law takes its cause. Nigeria will survive. Uh, that is what uh, Vietnam said, I think. Uh, Nigeria will survive. Africa will survive. My people will survive. That is how it is. So whatever it is, God help us as a people. Thank you for being a part of this program. Until uh, another time, my name is Nyamgul Agadji. I wish you a wonderful weekend. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.